Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Welcome to UM Toastmaster Club meeting with the theme, The New Resolutions. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge a few guests helping us as role players. Welcome Area W1 Director, Toastmaster Yasmin. Welcome Area W4 Director, Gladys. Welcome Senior Jeff from Advanced Arden Speakers, ex-UM Toastmaster member. Welcome, Jin Wen, President of Utah Sungai Long Toastmaster Club. Welcome, Danish Akta. Welcome, all the guests, and welcome, my fellow UM Toastmaster Club members. In accordance to the meeting theme, tonight's special night for this club is we're going to witness a ceremony where newly elected officials are being installed. Man out in white, the club officer, installation officer, Yasmin to come on stage to conduct the ceremony. Thank you, Minkang. Welcome to the installation ceremony of the newly elected club officers of University Malaya Toastmasters Club. Before I perform the installation ceremony, I would like to speak to the previous terms club officers. Zoom master, can you help to spotlight all the outgoing club officers, term 2021, 2022? Okay. <clears throat> On behalf of District 51, I would like to thank you for your leadership, commitment, and hard work in the previous term. You have served your club well and led the club towards a successful path. It was not an easy task, especially during these uncertain times, but you've made it at the, to the end of your term. With that, I officially discharge you from all further duties and responsibilities as officers of your club. Thank you. Now, the installation ceremony for the newly elected club officers of University Malaya Toastmasters Club for the term 2022 and 2023 and prepare them for the challenges ahead where their collective challenge is to make this club strong and dedicated to helping people from all walks of life to speak in an effective manner, listen with sensitivity and think creatively. I will ask each officer <clears throat> to hold the gable as a symbol of leadership as I briefly describe the challenges that they will meet and the responsibilities that they must fulfill. Club officers, I will be calling you one by one in this sequence. SAA, Treasurer, Secretary, Vice President Public Relations, Vice President Membership, Vice President Education and President. Zoom Master, kindly assist to spotlight accordingly. As I call you, hold, your, hold the gable and raise your right hand. Then, after I've read your role description, please respond to me with, yes, I will. First, Sergeant at Arms. Sorry to interrupt uh, our installation master, Yasmin. Uh, yep. For officer, please turn on your camera. Otherwise, I couldn't pin you. I couldn't spotlight you. Thank you. Yeah, and the uh, non escorts please turn off your camera. So it's easy that way. Okay. Just hold on a sec. <coughs> we shall wait for... <coughs> 
Isaac? Uh, sorry, but my house no electricity, so... <laughs> oh dear. Uh, can you speak or you are unable to speak? Okay, then we'll just listen to your voice speak, if that's all right. <clears throat> okay. Isaac, as Sergeant at Arms, you are yes. responsible for setting the stage for club meetings. Your duties include securing a room or a virtual platform for the meeting, maintaining club equipments, arranging the room before the meetings, and greeting members and guests. Will you perform these duties to the best of your ability? Yes, I will. Thank you, Isaac. Next is Secretary Hong Jian. Yeah, you're there. Yes, I'm here. Uh, please raise your right hand. As Secretary, you are responsible for maintaining an accurate club roster, mailing the club officer list to World Headquarters, and handling general club correspondence. Will you perform these duties to the best of your ability? Yes, I will. Thank you. You may put your hand down. Vice President, Public Relations, Ching Ping. As VPPR, your role is to promote the club to the local or internet media and potential guests, to welcome guests when they arrive, and to support other membership programs. Will you perform these duties to the best of your ability? Yes, I will. Thank you. You may put your hand down. <coughs> Next, Vice President <laughs> Membership, Joshua. As VPM, your role is to conduct an ongoing membership program that will promote the membership goals of this club. You should follow up on guests and help to retain current members. This role, you are also an automatic member of the Area W1 Council, working directly with Area Director at the area level. Will you perform these duties to the best of your ability? Yes, I will. Thank you. You may put your hand down. Next, Vice President Education, Yu Ming. Yes. Oh. Please raise your right hand. Oh, I don't know why the camera is flipped. Oh. As VPE, you are responsible for planning successful club meetings so that each member can achieve his or her educational goals. You are the second highest ranking club officer and will preside at club meetings in the absence of the president. In this role, you are also an automatic member of the Area W1 Council, working directly with the area director at the area level. Will you perform these duties to the best of your ability? Yes, I will. Thank you. You may put your hand down. And President Minkang, having been selected to the Office of President for University of Malaya Toastmasters Club, you are its Chief Executive Officer, CEO, and will be expected to preside at all club meetings and all the meetings of your executive committee. It is your challenge to see that this club enables its members to achieve their educational goals. It is also your challenge to see that your club helps the area, division, district, and Toastmasters International to meet their goals. Please accept the gavel as a symbol of your leadership and dedication to the office. The gavel is a symbol of the power and authority given to you by the membership of this club. Use it wisely and with restraint. You are a member of your team as well as its leader. A team is more than just a collection of people. It is an emotional force rooted in the feelings, thoughts, 
and action of all members with the common goal of achievement and sharing and also mutual support. So work with your team to create a healthy, dynamic club, a club of which everyone can be proud of. Will you, as president, accept these challenges and perform your duties to the best of your abilities? Yes, I will. Thank you. You may put your hand down. With that, and with great pleasure, I, sh I now declare that these Toastmasters are now installed to the office of which they have been elected to. Next, I would like to call upon all members of this club. So to all members of University of Malaya Toastmasters Club, maybe you can turn on your webcam and raise your right hand. I will now read the member's pledge. After that, please respond to me with, <laughs> yes, we will. Members of University of Malaya Toastmasters Club, the growth and development of the Toastmasters program depends largely upon the actions of this group. On your honor as men and women of Toastmasters, do you pledge to individually and collectively stand by this club's leadership and work with them throughout this whole term? Yes, we will. Yes, we do. Again? <laughs> Maybe yes. you can all unmute yes, yourself. We will. Yes, we will. All right. Thank you, everyone. You may put your hands down. Before I hand over uh, the control to the TME, I would like to invite the newly installed president to give an acceptance speech. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and join me in welcoming our new president, Minka. Over to you, Mr. President. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, New Year, new resolution. Today marks the beginning of the year 16 of UM Toastmasters. With the ever-changing world, you will see the changes we bring and we will bring to the club while preserving the traditions that we love. We promise to bring a variety of variety to regular meetings because we know members need more than public speaking. Open evaluation session, teaching session, career focus sessions, and many more will be introduced to the meetings, making your already wonderful first and third Monday's evening even more amazing. Carl, what happened to your deliver speech after today? Any idea? No idea. It goes to history. It goes to the recording. It's gone. Make every speech matter is my goal for this term. Speeches delivered by members of UN Toastmasters will be selectively chosen to be posted on social media on a weekly basis. Of course, with the consent of the speakers themselves. In fact, someone's speech will be posted in a few moments. Joshua, you there? Yes. Your speeches don't expire 20 members. Your speeches inspire hundreds and thousands. Elvin, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, Elvin, why change one's life while well, you can change hundreds, while well, you can change thousands of lives? Everyone in this room can achieve more and should achieve more. And we, New at Gold teams, we're making it happen. Finally, I know how great it is to speak with a microphone physically. The sound, the confidence, the feelings, I want to bring it to our meetings at least once, at least once in our term. I want to bring microphones. I want to let members, all of you, try out 
how great it is to speak with my phone physically. So stay tuned for that. Ladies and gentlemen, there's more to come. Me, the president, Yu Meng, the VP, Joshua, the VPM, Singping, the VPPR, Sing the treasurer, Hong Jin, the secretary, and Yijie, the SAA. We have seven, but we are incomplete. Why? We need you, members. We need you to complete UM Toast Master Club. Show me. Show me your spirit, members. Support our initiatives. Do speeches. Do speeches on Instagram, on Facebook. We are more than ready to serve you for this term. Thank you so much. Over to Yasmin. Yes, me. Oh, okay. Thank you, Minkang, for your speech. I shall now pass the floor to our president, Minkang, to take over the next agenda. Over to you, Minkang. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as a VP, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, as a Toastmaster of the evening, I'm the MC for today's meeting. UN Toastmaster Club is a platform to practice public speaking, to develop communications, to develop leadership skills. Everyone is, anyone in this room has their own reason to participate in Toastmaster. Hong Jian, why are you here today? Why? Why do uh, you join this meeting? Sorry. Yeah, I can hear you. The reason I joined this meeting, this meeting or Toastmaster in general. <laughs> okay. Do you have things to do today? Do you have special tasks for today? Uh, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm doing a speech, uh, writing a speech with purpose. Right. Thank you. Dr. Ralph C. Smedley, mm -hmm. back in 1924, saw a need for the men in the community to learn how to speak, to conduct meetings, to plan meetings, programs, to work on committees. So he founded Toastmasters in the US. Fellow Toastmaster, does that sound familiar to you? To learn how to speak, to conduct meetings, to plan programs, to work on committees. It's basically what we do in Toastmaster, right? In 2007, Professor Maro Hani saw the importance of public speaking in students in University of Malaya. She initiated UM Toastmaster Club. So today, we're holding the Toastmaster spirit all the way from 1924 to 2007 to today to improve ourselves and to inspire others. Now we know 1924 till today has been uh, almost 100 years Things get irrelevant over time, but not public speaking, not communication, and definitely not leadership. Leadership. Simply, you're here to improve. I know. And we'll make sure that you improve. How? With role players, everyone is assured to get something from today. These two and a half hours is very meaningful to everyone here today. Introducing role players, starting with Grammarian Alwin. Please introduce uh, your role. Uh, hold, hold on a second. Uh, let me share the screen. Hold on. Um, and... All right. Uh, can you guys see what is presented on this? Right. So, uh, yes. Right. Okay. So. What is this? All right. So, uh, good evening, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests. As grammarian, it is my responsibility to pay close attention to all speakers 
listening carefully to their language usage. I'll take note of any improper language as well as any outstanding words, quotes, sayings, or thoughts. As grammarian, it is also my duty to introduce the word of the day. For today's meeting, the word is opportunity, which by, de by definition is an occasion or situation that makes it possible to do something that you want to do or have to do, or the possibility of doing something. An example of using the word is everyone will have an opportunity to participate and speak, where in this case, during the meeting. Now, each speaker is encouraged to use the word of the day. Finally, I will give the grammarian's report when called upon during the meeting and also report on the usage of the word of the day. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Right. Opportunity is everywhere. It's just whether you see it or not. Toastmaster is one of them. Next, I'd like to invite Timer Joshua to introduce your role. Thank you, Toastmaster of the evening. Greetings, fellow Toastmaster. Has the timer, I will time the table topics prepared projects and evaluation speeches. I will also alert each speaker of their time using the green, yellow, and red backgrounds, which denote specific times remaining. That is all from me. Back to you, Toastmaster of the evening. Third row players will be our R counter, Toastmaster Tifa, please. Good evening, everyone. As the R counter, I'll be reminding your R's and ums and also repeated words like R, R, La, La, and other words that are repeated by the speaker. So back to you, Minkang. <clears throat> Thank you. Last but not least, try to invite the general evaluator, Yasmin. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters and guests. The purpose of the general evaluator is to evaluate everything that takes place throughout the meeting. During the meeting, I will take notes of everything that happens and does not happen. I will evaluate each participant on the meeting program and look for good example of preparation, organization, delivery, enthusiasm, observation, and performance of duties. At the end of the meeting, I will give my report. Back to you. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you. Now, Toastmaster Iktifa, may I ask you a question? What is the most important asset in a Toastmaster club? Members. Yes. <laughs> Members are the most important assets in a club. That's why we have special moments, special ceremony for every new members. May I now welcome Vice President of Membership, Joshua Lim to conduct new members in action. Joshua, please. Thank you, Toastmaster of the evening. I will now conduct the new member induction ceremony for Daryl, which is our newly, which is, which is our new member for UMTMC. So Daryl, are you there? Ah, uh, yes. Ah, yes, good to see you. Now, we have <laughs> fellow Toastmasters, it is now our duty and privilege to induct Daryl Ryan, Ryan Chong, new members into the University of Malaya Toastmasters Club. This is an important occasion both for our new member and for our club. The individual have come to Toastmasters seeking to improve his communication and leadership. And we now have an opportunity to help him learn, grow, and achieve. I will now call our new member forward and ask him to join me, which he is right here. Please withhold your applause until the ceremony is completed. Daryl Ryan Chong. You are joining a worldwide organization that has helped more than 4 million people to learn to communicate more effectively. As members of the University of Malaya Toastmasters Club, you will benefit from a proven program of self-development. You will become part of an outstanding group of people who are, who are dedicated to helping one another 
in a spirit of sharing and enjoyment. Ms. Chong Yu Meng, our Vice President of Education, have the new member be been given an opportunity to discuss his needs and goals? <laughs> have, they, have he been told how the Toastmasters program works and informed of the many benefits he will receive as well as the obligation of membership? Uh, I think yes. Okay. Who have been assigned as mentor for Daryl? Uh, uh, Yumi, who has been assigned as the mentor for Daryl? Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, actually, it's me. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, yes. So, Yumi is the mentor for Daryl. All right. Would both of them please stand? Uh, I mean, please join us in this online meeting. As experienced Toastmasters, you have been asked to help the new member to get off to a good start. Do you accept this responsibility and pledge to share your knowledge and experience with our new member so that he can immediately begin to benefit from his Toastmasters membership? Yes. All right. Membership in this club and in Toastmasters International is a privilege that comes with its many rewards. Yet, it also places certain obligations upon you. We are a group of people brought together to do things we could not accomplish alone. Our collective obligation is to grow and improve ourselves and to share our knowledge and experience with fellow members in a spirit of enjoyment. This means you must work diligently toward your own self-development, evaluate others' speeches, in a spirit of support and sharing, assist the club in reaching its goals, remain positive, and keep a smile on your face. We ask you, our new member, to dedicate yourself to personal growth, to share this great gift with your fellow members, and to help keep this Toastmasters club strong and dynamic. Now, I would like to affirm your membership so uh, you can follow the repeating words when I say. So, uh, Daryl, I, I, Daryl, Daryl, in the presence of my fellow members, in the presence of my fellow members of University Malaya Toastmasters Club, of University Malaya Toastmasters Club, make this firm obligation make this firm obligation to attend meetings regularly to attend meetings regularly and prepare fully and prepare fully for each assignment for each assignment to apply myself to the projects to apply myself to the projects outlined in outlined in the Toastmasters Education Program. The Toastmasters Education Program. To participate actively. To participate actively. In club activities. In club activities. To evaluate others. To evaluate others. In a positive. In a positive. Constructive manner. Constructive manner. To build open. To build open friendly relationships, friendly relationships with my fellow members, with my fellow members, and to bring and to bring other new members, new members into the club, into the club, so that they, so that they can also gain, can also gain the benefits of Toastmasters, benefits of Toastmasters. Would all club members please repeat your club's pledge to its new members? We, we, we the members of the members of, of University Malaya Toastmasters Club, University Malaya Toastmasters Club, <coughs> pledge to support you, pledge to support you in your quest, in your quest, in your quest for self development. 
for self development to provide you with to provide you with positive helpful evaluations positive helpful evaluations to maintain a to maintain a friendly supportive friendly supportive atmosphere atmosphere to give you to give you opportunities to help others opportunities to help others and to make and to make to make your toastmasters membership toastmasters membership a rewarding a rewarding and fulfilling experience and fulfilling experience and that shall conclude our new member induction ceremony welcome daryl to university mlato so And now I shall pass to our Toastmasters of the evening, Ming Kang. Thank you. Wonderful ceremony. Let's continue to today's sessions. Your first step in Toastmaster journey is a table topic session. Fellow guests, non-UM Toastmasters club members, non-students, non-UM staff, Everyone in this room, please welcome. Please join these sessions. We want you to participate in this because, like I say, we'll make sure this meeting. We'll make sure everyone here, every single person, get something from this meeting. Passing the floor over to Table Topic Master. Let's welcome Itifa Rafi. Thank you, President Ming Kang, for the introduction. So. Today we are having table topics, and I'm your table topic master. Before I start, I would like to ask our president: How many divisions are there in District Fifty One? Nine. <laughs> Wrong. It's just seven. So yeah. seven is the numbers of table topics that I have in my hand. <clears throat> Before I start calling people out, I would like to have Joshua to. Demonstrate the timing device for the table topics. So normally, table topics will be around two minutes max, max and one minute minimum. So Joshua, can you show the green light at one minute? Yeah, I should. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the yellow light at one and a half minutes. And at two minutes, the red light. And at two and a half minutes, the buzzer. All right. So for tonight's topic, there's there's for tonight's topics, there's two special topics that will be running for about five minutes. So again, the timer will be sh shown green at four, yellow at four and a half, and red at five, and the buzzer will be. Rang at five at five and a half minutes. <clears throat> so, can I have the first volunteer? Is it the five minutes one or the usual? There's two topics. There is five minutes, and the rest is all two minutes and a half. So it depends on which letter of the sorry, which alphabet you pick, and the alphabet is corresponding to the the num after the num name of the division in fifty one. I won. Okay, Minka, please choose your division. W. Oh. <laughs> Why? Minka, E equals to MC square. E equals to MC square. Minka. I want to make sure is this the five minute version or the two minutes version? Thank you, Table Topic Masters. Seems like I picked the right topic, huh? Um, does anyone know what I'm studying, my university? All right. For your information, I'm doing physics in university. And what do physicists study? Daryl. They study how the universe works. Yes. E equal m c square. One equations 
describing how the universe works. So in this one minute, I will try to let you understand E equals MC squared. Don't feel bored because you're going to appreciate me later on. E equal MC squared. Start from E, the energy. Equal means the left hand side is the same as right hand side. The M means the mass. The C is a big number. C squared is a very, very big number. So when you see E equal MC squared, the first thing you will imagine, or the first thing you will um, think about is Albert Einstein. I hope that after today, when you see E equal MC squared, the first person that you think about is me, not Albert Einstein. So, Min Kang, E equal MC squared. This expression basically means that energy and mass is the same. Okay, you might be, che, you might be, wow, what? E equal MC squared, energy and the mass is the same. Why? If you ask why, you are wrong. Not you are wrong, you are asked the wrong questions because this is a fundamental relation between energy and mass. What does it mean? It means that if you, if you have a, an object, five gram, this adds the M mass. A number multiplied by a very big number gives you very, very big number. C is a very big number. So if you multiply a five gram stuff with a very big number, you will get a huge, huge energy. I'm not sure if you can recall this, but we have atomic bombs causing World War II to end and causing, I don't know, causing everyone to be very stressed, every country because of the atomic bomb. What does the atomic bomb based on? I couldn't see the timer. Oh, I mean, there. For your information, the atomic bomb that everyone is scared about, the atomic bomb that everyone is, I don't know, country leaders are exciting about, is based on this equation, E equal MC squared. Not sure if you can um, recognize atomic bomb is not that huge. It's like, uh, I don't know, it's not that huge to create the great power. May I know why? after all the explanation that I've given. Why such a small atomic bomb can create such enormous amount of energy? Danish, I see you are muting yourself. I'm curious, I'm given two minutes, but uh, I couldn't see time switching background. I'm sure that I've over time, right? Okay, I couldn't see because it shows uh, the same background all the time. I will conclude my speech by saying that E equal MC square relates to atomic bomb, saying that a very small amount of mass can create enormous number of energy. So back to the table topic master. Of course, I over time. Oh my god. Thank you, Ming Kang, for the short physics lecture. So can I have the next victim or participant before I choose a name? <clears throat> okay, I would like to choose Daryl. Daryl, could you unmute yourself? Oh, yes. All right, so please pick an uh, alphabet. H, J, N, P, Q, S. Uh, S. S. All right. <clears throat> so for S, it will be a two-minute speech. You have to do a descriptive speech of eating a burger. <laughs> okay. So I just start? Yes. Start whenever you're ready. <clears throat> okay. Um, 
So um, I'm not sure what I'm going to say for two minutes talking about <laughs> eating a burger, but let's just this um let's just describe I think one of the best burgers that I've eaten in my life, I think. <laughs> um well first I have to figure out like what is the best burger I've eaten in my life. Um if we are comparing between like McDonald's and um Burger King, I think I prefer Burger King because the um patty or the meat is much more juicier than McDonald's. For McDonald's, the meat is sort of dry and um, um the yeah, I just feel that Burger King's um burger overall is tastes better and it tastes more real. And uh, but on the other hand, um, aside from fast food burgers, I feel that burgers like in um, restaurants could possibly be better, especially when they make uh especially when they make the patties themselves instead of um yeah, instead of the ones that are made in large batches for for the fast food restaurants. So I think a good burger would have to be um for me a delicious burger would have to be have the right amount of moisture within the burger you have to have it has it cannot be too dry it also has to be um for me i prefer it to be somewhat sweet and not too salty and i prefer a little more crunch um because of like the lettuce within the burger so yeah uh and for me, I wouldn't uh, take any burger that has spice or spiciness in it because I can't eat spicy food. So yeah, I think that would be the ideal burger for me. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl, for promoting Burger King. <clears throat> so can I have the next participant before I pick? Well, Perhaps, yes. No one uh, um, asked for yes, non-Toastmasters to try. Yeah, can okay, sure, someone sure. as a guest or non-Toastmasters try? Well, since if no guest wants to take, I will gladly take the opportunity. Uh, that is Danish, right? Eh? Yeah, it's Danish. Yeah, mm. Danish. <clears throat> so you choose between H, J, N, P, and Q. Oh, sorry. All right, now I guess I'm more of life, right? H, P, N, G, and Q. Hmm. Yes. Give me N. N. All right. <clears throat> Danish? Words are the sharpest weapon. Words are the sharpest weapon, Danish. As they say, a pen is mightier than a sword. Words are the sharpest weapon. In life, we've always associated that, especially during wars, we always associate that the most, the strongest thing in wars is the knives, the weapons, the guns, AR-16 rifles, and many more. However, what is the thing that actually starts these wars? It is the words. Words are the sharpest weapon and they can cut you like a knife, a hot butter on a, like cut you like a hot butter into a melted butter in milliseconds. Why? While knives are sharp, however, we, do we question ourselves as humans? We can actually who uses the knives? The knives are used by humans itself. We are the ones who control the usage of the knife. If we had the opportunity, basically, we can control the usage of our knives. After all, there's a saying, temptations. The word temptations is a very powerful word. If you cannot control your temptations, you'll just slice it down. However, what causes that temptation to rise? It is the words. Like, for example, all the walls breaking out why did the war start? It's because of a matter of words. Like, for example, the exchange between a, a two countries in Europe at this moment, it all started from a war of words. And other countries have followed suit. And one of the ways why words is so powerful is because we can see it's in Malaysia. 1957, how did we achieve independence? It was not through war, 
to shooting, to killing people. But it was through a declaration of independence where Tunku Abdul Rahman went to see then the young, a young Queen Elizabeth signed the memor the Commonwealth Declaration, whereby we will achieve independence in the 31st of this August. 1957. Therefore, we can see why word is a powerful thing. In a nutshell, words are the most powerful weapon. If we know how to use it properly, the weapon is safeguarded. However, if we don't know how to use it properly, all hell may break loose. With that, back to you, Table Topic Master. <clears throat> Thank you, Danish, for your inspiring speech. So, for the next participant, I'd like to choose someone more experienced. And for this someone more experienced, you will get the five-minute speech. The five-minute speech is between letters H and Q. <clears throat> Can I have our guest, Gladys? Okay. Gladys, please choose a partner. Partner? Uh, yeah. What do you mean, partner? Uh, a partner for your speech. Uh, partner for my speech. Sean. All right. <clears throat> so, ladies and Sean, you will be attempting the negotiating a deal speech. So, the scenario is, one of you is buying food at, at, a, cha, at a cha fund. Please nego a proper price with the seller. So, who is the seller? Who is the... Up to you guys. <laughs> Can you spotlight, Sean? <clears throat> Zoomaster, please help. Uh, Sean, can you raise hand? I can't find your name. <clears throat> I don't see Sean here. Uh, just now I saw I saw him. I think he left for a while. Maybe you can I choose some other, other person. Uh, yeah. Darren. Darren. Okay, sure. Hi, cool. uh, can you excuse me because I'm recovering from COVID? <clears throat> oh, oh I see. Okay, sorry, thanks. Let me, I just find it for you. Okay. Kyle. Kyle. Kyle is my speaker. I'm evaluating him. Okay. It's all right. Uh, so right. what's your question again? The scenario is buying food at a cha fund. Please negotiate cha the fund. price with seller. Cha fund, that means it's the economic rights. Yes. Oh, cha fund. So who's going to be the... Uh, okay, how about Gladys? You are the buyer. Carl is the seller. Carl is the seller. Hmm. Okay. So who go first? You go first, yeah. Hey, can I hear you? Can I hear you? Can I hear? Uh, Carl, you are muted. Yeah. You're not muted, but then I couldn't hear your voice. Yeah, we I, can't thought, I, was, I thought I was the one who lost my voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. Carl, you're out. What can they go in the front? <laughs> Uh, timer, please reset the timer, please. <clears throat> so, Gladys, you are the you are the buyer. Can think you are the seller. Oh, okay. really? For real? Me? Yeah, for real. Yeah, I was thinking of going to the toilet just now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So, can think you say I'm the seller. You are the you are the you buy from yes, my sir. shop. Okay, then you start first. Okay, I'm buying, right? Yeah, you're buying. Knock, 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 knock. Hmm. Oh, is this restaurant one, two, three? I would like to buy some top fun, economy rice. Since I'm a student from University of Malaya, I'm looking for the cheapest top fun that I can find for today so for that you? I can save. Is it for you or for how many people oh, are you? Not just for me. I'm also buying for some of my friends, Joshua and Ming Kang as well. We are staying in the same, same college. Okay, you, the menu is over here. Uh, take your pick. Hmm. Hey, why there's no uh, chicken chop? I'm just some um, oh, oh, vegetable. I'm not vegetarian. I'm actually, I want to have meat for my lunch. Okay, there are A, B, C, D, E, set. Can you choose from there? Set A seems nice, but I think it's a little expensive. 10 ringgit. Mm -hmm. I'm going for set, set B. Set B is 
Yeah, I think it's acceptable. Seven ringgit, one set. Yeah, sure. I, I think I'll get set B and also for my friends over there, I mean, can I do, I'll get them a set B as well. Uh, so that means seven dollars for three sets, right? Yes, seven dollars for three sets. When so you need it, twenty-one dollars. So when when do you need it now or? Yeah, I think I would like to have it now since I'm, I come here by by driving here, so I'm, I just got to take it back. Yeah, sure. So for students, I'll give you something extra. Oh really? Because you seems to be such a nice guy. Let me give you something extra. You. Hmm? Uh, just you. give me another 10 minutes. Huh? I'll pack for you. All right, sure. Is that, is, are you selling any drinks? I'm giving you as a FOC. Wow, that's oh, great. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to be sitting every day. Yeah, sure. So uh, please advertise for me because I've just opened this shop. Come over as often as you like. I'll give you something compliment. For sure. I also invite all my all my friends, even Toastmaster friends. So all, all my Toastmaster friends, I'll promote it in Toastmaster group. So guys, yes, this is such a nice shop, nice restaurant. I believe the food is should be really nice. I'm going to every day. I, I will definitely enjoy it. Yeah, hopefully. And then uh, through your words of mouth, I'll be able to get more business. Still blue screen. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> okay. Okay, now it's okay. I go back already. Mm. I drive back home and then I have my lunch with Ming Kang and Joshua at uh, College Kediaman, University of Malaya. That it was such a nice lunch that we have. We really enjoy it. The meat is really tender. And then the drinks at the F FOC, it is in fact uh, iced lemonade. It turns out to be my favorite drink. I enjoy it a lot. And you know, today is, uh, is you know, in the afternoon, it, it was really hot. This iced lemonade really provide me the refreshment that I need for this hot summer day. So now, a few hours later, it's dinner time. So I'm thinking of what I want to have for my dinner. Takan, I'm takan. Oh, sorry, this is uh, my neighbor. I'm going to have a tough fun again. But I'm going to check going through this uh, Shopee food, Food Panda, and a Grab Food app. I was thinking of ordering something online because I'm busy to drive out of UM to get my dinner. But all the foods are very expensive. And it turns out today is very unfortunate. All the cafes in UM uh, have closed due to some unknown reason. So maybe I remember, I recall that this afternoon I have this a really nice, I went to this really nice shop and there's a really nice lady, Gladys over there offering me food with FOC drinks. I might want to plan to visit there again. And here I go, together with Joshua and Ming Kang, I drive them to that shop again for my lunch and dinner. It was such a wonderful day. And you know what? For our dinner, we also have FOC ice lemonade. We have the same set B, the seven ringgit set B for our lunch and dinner. Guess what? This is a really fantastic meal. And you, you are going, all of you, I suggest you to order it whenever you visit that shop. And back to you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Gladys and Kenting. I was hoping for some spice, but then yala, Kenting is too nice. So uh timer, do you have time for one more? <clears throat> I think we can have one more. All right. So just now I think Minkang volunteered Fernandez. <clears throat> So, Fernandez, are you up for the job? Oh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear you? Oh, very good evening. Uh, I'm Fernandez here. So, what is it all about? 
so basically it's a table topic session where you are given a topic and you need to speak within the times with a time limit set. So for today, okay. uh, we have three more topics and two of them is two minutes and one of them is five minutes. Okay. <clears throat> so the um, the alphabet that is left is J, P and Q. J, P and Q. So I have to come up with one. A yeah, word no, you have to the... pick one of them. Oh, okay. J, P and Q. Yeah. Okay, I'll go Q for Queen Tengku Amina. All right. So again, I like you to pick another friend to accompany you. Uh, whoever's name has the alphabet E. E. <laughs> yes, mean E. Yes. All right. So the scenario is. Is it like Jasmine the okay E? Okay, yeah, E, yeah. So the scenario is you one of you is a tourist in China. You are trying to get a direction from the locals. Okay. Can so yeah, you can be a role. Am I supposed to speak English. in Mandarin? No, uh just English. Yeah. One of you okay. play English. <clears throat> so Fernandez, you will be the tourist. Yes, me, you will be the local. Okay, uh, sure. Why not? All right. So again, this is a five minute speech. Your time starts now. Okay, well, <clears throat> so I need to ask, okay, uh, since like uh, I'm new, so like I just like to make a quick uh, introduction. So I'm Fernandez. I'm doing master's in uh, criminal justice in uh, law faculties. And yeah, so now I just want to make sure that I, we have to speak about five minutes there, that yeah. I have to act like as a tourist and uh, I supposed to ask a direction to go somewhere. And within yep. the five minutes, we can speak whatever it is, but it has to be direction or location or whatsoever. Yes, it must be regarding the topic. Okay, so do you have any preference, Jasmine, that you want to talk anything about? Or we can go with the flow? Yeah, we can just go with the flow. All right, we are done. Okay. Right. Uh, so you're local there, right? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, excuse me, Lang Noi. Our... Uh, <laughs> Can I ask you one help? Yes, why is it young boy? Oh, okay. I'm not that young anyway. Thank you. I take it as a compliment. Well, <laughs> well, I just like to go to the, uh, you know, the wall, the great wall or something like that. Where is it located? I, I don't even know, but my friends told me that there is a wall there. It's a very long wall. Is it a great one or not a great one? I'm not really sure. If you are talking about the great wall, right, I think you are at the wrong place because in order for you to go to the great wall, you need to take a bus. And this bus, right, is like one hour ride from where we are right now. Okay, so are you talking about the great wall of China? Oh, yes, yes, yes. The Great Wall. I thought the greatest. But anyway, uh, so where am I supposed to get a bus? Am I supposed to take the bus here? Or am I supposed to take the train all the way to another bus station or something? Okay, from here, you, you walk straight about one kilometer. And then you turn right. And then you turn left. And then you walk straight some more, about 500 meters. Then you can see the bus stop on your left. So do you, yeah. okay, I like the way that you tell me the direction, but I don't think so I have the energy to walk all the way there. <laughs> so what is the alternative that I can get it to get down there? From here, you can also take the taxi, but oh. in China, right, the they taxi call, are very expensive. Oh, they call taxi here? I'm from <laughs> Malaysia, you, you know Malaysian word. Taxi is English way, or yeah. you no, may you know it as cab. Cab. <laughs> cab. Yeah. Yeah, from here okay. you can take the cab or taxi, but it's very expensive. So I suggest that maybe you can take the electric bike. If you see on the left side, right, there is a there's a place for electric bi bicycles. 
and okay. you just uh, pay a small amount of money and you can cycle to the bus stop. That's the cheapest oh. way. Mm, then you get to but enjoy the... What? I don't have internet connection in my phone. Oh, you don't have the internet connection. So how am I supposed to do? Uh, maybe I can... I know in China got a lot of CCTV. <laughs> do they have a... Do, do they have a free Wi-Fi? <laughs> I think you don't need to to think so much. You just use my phone, okay? And then oh, we will wow. pay using my phone. And consider wow. it as a trip because you are a tourist here in China. Oh, and, Shani. Yes, and we welcome you to our country. Okay, cool. So once I go there, what is the admission fee? Am I, uh, I need to go inside the greatest wall of China. Actually, the Great Wall, right? You have we have a lot of entrance. I think we have about three or four entrance. So if you want to take the cable car, you go to entrance A and it will cost about 100 ringgit in your currency. Ah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, fine. That, that, that should be fine. And once I'm done, what's the operation uh, hours that uh, I can be in the wall? You can be there as long as you like, as long as you don't stay there overnight because you will starve and you will get thirsty. So you better come back before it gets dark. What time is the end? Camping there. You can, you can camp oh, there, camp but there. only in the morning until evening. <laughs> but after that, you have to come back. Otherwise, you'll be trapped there. I think Fernandez just went to China. <laughs> yeah, it's not internet connection. Yeah. Okay, I see the timer already. So that's all from us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Yasmin and Fernandez. <clears throat> I hope you have a great time in Great World of China, Fernandez. So as the table, as the table topic master, my duty is end. My duty has ended. So I'd like to pass oh. the floor Thank you so back much. to and, Oh, can I get your phone now so I can order the my Fernandez, you can uh, try the CCTV for the internet, I think. <laughs> you are very internet connections ish. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I'll mute you now. All right. Um before I proceed, we we'll have a vote for the best table topic speakers. Please do master. So can everyone please uh, send me your uh, result to this number? Let me share in the group chat. Do you want us to direct message you? Yeah. Do you want to remind us who were the speakers? So we have our first table topic speaker, Ming Kang, E equal MC square. We have our second table topic speaker hey, who is that uh, um, we have, today we have four no, speakers our uh, speaker is Queen Kang second is yes. Daryl Brian Chong Darryl then is followed Darryl. by Gladys and Ken Teng and mm -hmm. lastly we have Fernandez and Yasmin, Yasmin. Uh, may I know is the message should be directed to Ken Teng right Yes. That's your number, right? Yeah, that's my number. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And back to you, first master of eating income. All right. For those who haven't voted, you may vote alongside my uh, session. Okay. So we just experienced the first sessions of your Toastmaster journey. Now we're moving on to our second station. Second station is called the Prepare Speech Sessions. Um, Queen you're there, Queen I don't see Queen Oh, I saw Queen Min. Queen Min? 
Yeah, yes. What do you do in a prepared speech session? In a prepared speech session, you are the speaker is a Toastmaster member, and each of them they have a project where each of the project has a purpose statement. So it's like a goal for them to achieve through their speeches. Usually, the speeches will be five to seven minutes long. I'm not sure if there's any special cases this evening, but we'll see as we proceed. I guess that's it. Back to you. Amazing. So in these sessions, members book speaking slots with the vice president and occasions, memory sessions, and they carefully craft their own speeches, presenting to us elegantly. Our brave soul today, first one is Toastmaster Xinping, first year biotechnology student, presenting us her icebreaker, four to six minutes icebreaker. Let's invite the evaluator Yu Meng to read the proper statement. Yu Meng? I can I can get the documents ready. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. All right, that gives him a bit more time to uh, get ready, huh? I thought there's a break before before the prepared speeches. <laughs> but, yeah. All right, that gives more time for Singbin to prepare because we're having a break. But now uh, we can start with her speech. Then we have break. Then we have more speakers. Uh, no, no, Singbin. I can see Singbin is like shocked. We are have a break first. But before this, let's have a photo session for everyone. Uh, Zoom master, please. Over to you. All right. Thank you, Arthur's Master Evening. So I would like to everyone to have your camera turned on. So I'll give you five seconds to do so before we proceed with the photo session. So Danish, Darren, Fernandez, Iktifar, Ruth, Isaac, iPhone. So five more seconds, Iktifar. What happened? Uh, now is the photo session. Oh, oh sorry, sorry, sorry. I want to stick my memory. Okay. So so normal posture first. Three, two, one, smile. Okay, let me sleep it. Okay, normal posture number two. Three, two, one, smile. Okay, let me sleep it. Okay, now uh Freestyle. Three, two, one. Mm. I just now the freestyle not clear. Okay, one more time. Freestyle three, two, one. Okay. Let me see if it. Okay, thank you everyone. And I'll pass the control back to our first master evening. All right, we we'll observe a five minutes break and we'll come back at 9 15. President, so serious tonight. Because I'm going to I mean, God, I suppose we've forgotten about the break. I've forgotten the break, I've forgotten the member induction ceremony, and uh. Thank God you guys will mind me. Thank you, Yasmin. Thank you, Jimwen. Otherwise, I was speaking a lot of sessions. <laughs> like for me, like for my experience, basically, like when you want to induct new expo members, right, you don't actually need that long. I find the the agenda is like half an hour. I like, induct of induct of a new member, new expo members. See, you don't really need that long, right? Induction. Uh, right. You just ten minutes enough. This is the truth. Huh? Induction of new. Expo members is shorter than the induction of new members. <laughs> really, like, it's true. Thanks for that. Me, like from my experience, like, I just from my experience the other day, I just installed. I last week I installed two clubs. Ah, as every day I installed two. I installed two club expo expo groups. <laughs> just ten to fifteen minutes. Ah, normally ten minutes is enough. But I just put a buffer of fifteen minutes. Physical also can ten fifteen minutes finish already. When is your division doing the COT? Finish already. My division for you mean my division? Yeah, our division just last week Saturday. Last two Saturday. What was the date? Ah, uh? is it physical or online? Physical. 
Where was that? Ah, where was that? You know MUCM? Last time we call MMMC. The university is it? Yeah. The your friend, your friend is there, what? Wait, I want to ask something. What did you eat during uh, per your COT? Oh, that one was IPDD, Immediate Fast Division Director Sponsor one. It was a uh, mama food. And... <laughs> Yeah, it was a bit spicy. I'm, I'm getting hungry now looking at ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> However, yeah, that's the truth. It is uh, sponsored, ah, which was a good thing because you didn't have to pay money. Or not, if a physical COT, you have to spend a little bit more because you have the costing from the venue, the rental, all that, and then you also got the food. So, so you got that. only lunch or breakfast and lunch? Lunch only because we start at 10 o'clock. I mean, if we are... <laughs> If we had more money, maybe we can do both. However, no, we need, we need more money, especially since the yeah. well, district basically is moving a lot to physical. Same law. Mm. I like yeah, so one thing about you see, there's a benefit, a good and bad about virtual COT. The good part is okay, you don't have to spend so much. The bad part is Zoom fatigue, which is uh, something which is quite worrying, especially for COT. But for physical, you want to zoom for it. However, you really need long hours sometimes. It depends on how the schedule works. I forward to start 10 o'clock, in, in supposedly in at 4 o'clock, and then in at 4.45. Then the beautiful part is, uh, of all the days, the university had a nice blackout in between. I don't know hey, why. That's quite, that's quite short at your duration. Start 10 o'clock, finish at 4.30. Quite short. Because ours is a very, our division is COT, is a, not division, our district, the, what is it, the TLI team, they decide, it's like we have four sessions only for this COT. Session one is the role players. Session two is the success, club success plan and moments of truth. Session three, building a strong club. Session four is session with division director. That's all, that's all our TLI team has specified for this term. Interesting, interesting. Actually, not this term, lah. For COT one, COT two, I don't know yet. Maybe COT two has more. <coughs> Do you have any like, for COT two? <coughs> when is my COT two ah? Mm. It's uh, expected to be either January or February next year. Mm. I mean, like, uh, the same time as well. As, I just do over as area director and man, the task ahead is so. <laughs> It's, quite, it's challenging, <coughs> but it's a good experience actually. But like, it's good lah now. At least like during our time, right? Everything is online, so it's easy for us to need to like spend time and money yeah. to travel to clubs. But now since everything is physical, yeah. right? The yeah. directors have to spend time now. Yeah. Like me, my for me, I took I just took over for Division A area A two. We is a. Uh, I would say it's a transition period, but at least one of we have two clubs in there. Like I need to get one, two more clubs inside my division, not division, inside my area to be stronger. So mm. far, I got one club achieved Super 7, another one I need to chase up with them. I'm chasing up with the president because only got three members, minimum need four members. But of course, if you train all together before the deadline, you can get Super 7. Are you still the area director? No, right? Huh? Are you still the area director? I've just been elected area director, so I'm oh, the area director for director. this term. Uh, That's why. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Getting starting. Uh, sorry to interrupt. So the break time, five minutes break is over. I will now pass the control back to our table. Toastmaster evening Ming Kang for the prepared speech session for today's meeting. Over to you. Thank you. We've given the first speaker enough time to get prepared. So, and we have had her evaluators stating the proper statements. Now, I would like to welcome. Yes, you may. Not yet. Please, you may, please. Okay, that's good. Um. Okay. Uh, hi. Um. Dear Xin Ping, um, the you're going to make a ice breaking speech. The purpose statement of the speech is is for the member to introduce themselves to the club and learn a learn the basic structure of the public speech. As for the notes for the evaluator, this member is completing their first speech in Toastmasters. 
The goal of the evaluation is to give the member an effective evaluation of their speech and delivery style. Because the icebreaker is the first project of a member completes, you may choose to use only the notes section and not the numerical score. If you know you will be evaluated ahead of the meeting, communicate with the speaker to learn about them and their goals for their first speech. Be sure to set aside enough time for a schedule to meet with the speaker after their speech to review the evaluation and answer any questions they may have. Back to you, Toastmaster, for the evening. All right. You. Let's welcome General Mr. Evaluator. Toastmaster. All right. Let's welcome General Evaluator Yasmin to read the notes for you, Ming. Hi. I think you, Ming, just read the notes for the evaluator. All right. <laughs> So uh, yeah, what he said just now, back yeah. to you. <laughs> yes, done a few for you. Thank you so much. Right. Welcome, Sing Ping. Presenting, hello, my name is, hello, my name is Sing Ping. Hello and good evening, Mr. Toastmaster of the evening and fellow Toastmasters. I believe some of you might find my face familiar and have seen me before in previous Toastmasters meetings. To be honest, I have become a member of this club since December 2021. In other words, I have joined this club for seven months. Although throughout the past seven months, I have attended meetings and even took up roles such as timer and the grammarian, this is the first time I am standing here trying to give a speech. After listening to so many people's speeches for the past few months, initially I thought that it was not a big deal, but now I have to admit that it indeed is quite nerve wracking being here. And here, I would like to give my full respect to those who have given his or her speech in the past. Your courage is indeed heroic and praiseworthy. First of all, let me give a quick self-introduction. My name is Lao Sing Ping. I am 20 years old, born and raised in Jinjiang, Kuala Lumpur. I have currently just finished my first year in Bachelor of Science in Biotechnology. Although I have already finished my first year, but I'm still unsure what did I learn thanks to online tests and assessments and what I am going to learn and I'm still going to find that out. The objective of my speech today is icebreaking. Therefore, here I would like to share three facts about myself. I assume myself a boring, no joke kind of serious type of person and I need to say it. These facts about me are also quite boring, but I hope that after listening to my speech, you will know more about me. The first fact is I am actually quite a shy and timid person. Ever since I can remember, I've been a quiet person and was often scared to speak in public. Even the idea of it makes me want to dig a hole and bury myself in it. During secondary school years, there was something called Coco Marks. I believe all of you know where you have to actively participate in clubs, societies, student activities and competitions in order to earn them. To me, out of all activities, Public speaking would be the last of the last option when it comes to talking about my opinions among a group of friends or just initiating a simple conversation. I would never be the first one to start it, not to mention doing self-introductions like these or challenging someone's opinions on a topic. These sound like nothing I would do voluntarily. Just by imagining the situation, I can already feel the butterflies in my stomach. Recently, like just yesterday, I went for a job as a promoter at Aeon Mid Valley. I worked there for two days. It was a 10 to 8 job. And it was only until the last hour of the last day of work, I got to know the name of the promoter standing next to me. This shows how much of an introverted person I am. Barack Obama once said, change will not come if we wait for someone or some other time. We are the ones we have been waiting for and we are the change that we seek. I realized that I had to somehow overcome this timidness in me, and that is why I joined Toastmasters. I hope that through this journey, I'm able to learn techniques to convey my messages and ideas clearly and effectively. And I wish that one day, I can confidently speak in a fluent and composed manner in front of public, just like what you all did. Next, I hope that I can improve my English too. Although my MUET results were okay, they were not bad actually, but I also felt that there's still a huge space for improvement. 
This is because my vocabulary and my usage of English in my daily life is actually very, very limited. And I realized that I rely more and more on Google Translate, even using Google Translate to help me in preparing this script. Therefore, it is a must that I need to improve my English by using it more often. Besides, I hope that by learning from the best people around, I can somehow gain some new experiences and new insights. Moving on, the next fact about me is my Chinese name and English name are different. As you all know, the Chinese and English name of a person would sound similar. For example, Ming Kang's Chinese name would be Ming Kang and uh, Yu Ming's Chinese name would be Yu Ming or something that sounds similar. But my Chinese name sounds different from my English name. When I was little, my Chinese name was Sing Ping too. But I had a weak respiratory system and was often sick. Out of 365 days of a year, about 300 days, I would be uh, having a cough, having a flu, or having a fever. Uh, I had to visit the doctor often, and sometimes I needed to use the respirator to help in my breathing. Worried about my health issues, my parents brought me to this fortune-telling stall, and there was a fortune-telling man called Lao Fuzi. He suggested me to change my Chinese name from Xingping to Xinghua because Xingping sounds like Shengping, which means falling sick in Chinese. And magically, after changing my name to Xinghua, I did not fall sick anymore and my health improved drastically. Some might say that it is a coincidence and some might say it is superstitiousness, but I still believe that there is something unexplainable about fortune telling. Do you think that it's uh, superstitiousness or do you also believe in fortune telling? Feel free to leave your opinions in the chat box below. And the above is the second fact about me. The third fact about me is that I am born on 28th of December 2022, which makes me a Capricorn. The usual stereotypes for Capricorns are that they are workaholics, meticulous, indifferent, and they are the type of very follow the rules people. However, to be honest, I think that they don't fully apply on me. Not that uh, I'm not a meticulous person in the opposite and a very careless person and often make careless mistakes in quizzes and I often forget uh, where did I put my things. Besides that, I also feel that I'm not an indifferent person. In fact, I'm an empathetic person. I can often resonate with others' feelings and that makes me want to help those people in need. I feel like I have a need to be useful and effective in the real world in order to be satisfied in my life. This leads to my ambition and goal in my life. Although I'm not sure about what I'm going to do or who I'm going to be in the future. But one thing that's sure is that I wish that I can help more people and be a change in this world. I hope that I can contribute my knowledge and skills to bring benefits to those in need or just simply bring smiles to patients, kids, the elderly, the matcha cleaners around, and you. And that marks the end of my speech. Three facts about me, a shy and timid person, having a different Chinese and English name, and a Capricorn. I hope that now you will know more about me. I appreciate your time and kind attention listening to my speech, and I wish all of you a pleasant night ahead. That is all from me today. Thank you. Thank you so much. One more fact about our speaker. Been joining for seven months, finally giving icebreaker speech. Celebrate these special moments. I want to call a standing ovation for our speaker singing for completions of icebreaker. Everyone, please. Standing ovation. Thank you. Congratulations. All right. On to our next speaker. Again, a relatively new member. Hong Jin, Dan Hong Jin, a third year electrical engineering student, presenting the first project, writing a speech with purpose. And I in my evaluator, Kui Min, fellow Hong Jin's mentor, Kui Min, to read the purpose statement. Thank you, Toastmaster Yifting Bin Kang. Now, the purpose of this project is for Hong Jin to learn or review basic methods for writing a speech with a defined purpose and to present a well-organized speech on any topic. Of course, the purpose and also the topic is of his own choosing, which is related to his title, Perfectionism, How to Stop Beating Yourself Up. The speech is five to seven minutes and I look forward to hearing more about it. Thank you and back to you, Toastmaster of Evening. Right. 
welcome general evaluator read note for Kuimin. Kuimin, the member completing this project is to learn or review basic methods of writing a speech with a defined purpose and to present a well-organized speech on any topic. About this speech, the member will present a well-organized and well-delivered speech. The speech may be humorous, informational, or any style that the member chooses. The speech content and the style should work together. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. All right. Tan Hong Jin, presenting perfectionism, how to stop beating yourself up. Perfectionism, how to stop beating yourself up. Tan Hong Jin. Perfectionism will be happy or feel bad if people label you as perfectionist. I believe most of the reactions are mixed and depending on the context. If it's in a work setting, most of the time it should not be much of a problem. And usually it's more of a compliment because it can trust your work. And usually high achievers take pride in their perfectionism because they have higher standards and they like to do things well. Me, as an experienced perfectionism, will be very meticulous about those small details. When working in group assignment, I'm the one that usually comment a lot on a lot of stuff on the report, like, should we talk about this before this? It will make the flow of the report better. So I, I'm, I'm the one that usually drag the meeting very long because I have too many comments. So you can see there's another flip side of the perfect, perfectionism. Getting hung up, getting hung up with the <laughs> yeah, the formatting, all that. Yeah, getting hung up with all those small details and pushing the work to higher standards usually will take longer time to finish it. And when the deadline is nearer, usually, and especially when the deadlines, multiple assignments are due, it will be, it will be very overwhelming. Stress, anxiety, those are, very, those, are very, those are some very bad feelings. Moreover, it's even worse when you're having the same expectation on your roommates. <laughs> I believe all the high achievers here will wonder, and my question is, since there's a thin line between perfectionism and ambitious, I, I think we should try to differentiate both first before we continue the, the discussion. But since I'm an engineering student, I'm not so qualified to diagnose anything from psychology, I actually like to chime in, uh, like to invite one of my friends to chime in on this. So wait for a while. <laughs> so hi, I'm 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 your therapist here. So you come here because come here because you think that you are perfectionists. <laughs> so let me check. Hmm. Symptom one, burnout. Have you ever had an extended period of time where you experience adjustments and the lack of interest in things, resulting in a decline in your job, in your job performance? Hmm. Yeah, that's called burnout, according to American Psychological Association. Unrealistic expectations often cause a constant amount of stress in both, both your work and home life. Living in a cycle of stress with no relief may allow a sense of happiness and despair to take root. So this will actually demotivate you and make you seem like there's no point to continue trying in your work. Uh, wait, I think your consultation time is up. I got to go. So uh, too bad I didn't pay enough for you guys to have the hope the, the full therapy. <laughs> yeah, but uh, luckily they he did explain psychologically the the first symptom of as a perfectionist. So but you experience quite frequent burnout. So maybe uh, I will share some personal experience on that on how how to overcome that how how to how to overcome that. So speaking as an experienced perfectionism, 
uh, taking regular breaks from work or activities will help to handle the perfectionism induced burnout. I would suggest carrying out physical activities because many things are happening inside the head of perfect, for perfectionism. It means, yeah. So exercise or jogging can really help you to distract yourself from those negative thoughts for a while because you're focusing on moving and enjoying the nature or your environment. So that, that's the first thing you can do. And then or you can stop your work or talk, talk your the thoughts with your friends. So the first tip to help with perfectionism is to constantly take a break and find suitable activities that can rejuvenate yourself. So self-care is very important. With enough self-care, it will even help you to work uh, a, faster, a faster pace or even bigger project load. So, even, so many perfectionism needs will often think that taking breaks are actually dragging their progress back, but instead it's actually helping them to progress forward. So another common symptom that I observe in myself is that perfectionism is uh tends to they tends to hang out on something for a long period. So getting something perfect is very hard. And having higher expectations will often make us having difficulty in making decisions because none of the options seems right. It's very easy to get stuck with the work and feel like knowing go where in the in the during the progress because there's no obvious parameters or guide for me to benchmark, especially when it comes to creative work, like writing the, the, writing the script. So when I, when I learned along the way, when I start studying engineering, where we always strive for seemingly impossible tasks, we'll often stay ground. And most importantly, we'll try to break down the problems into smaller problems, smaller subtasks, and have a concrete milestone for us to track. So, for example, should the rocket that uh, NASA sent to the moon be actually perfect? Yes, it has to be, or else it will cost a life. But did, did the engineer crumble uh, under such immense stress? No, instead, they actually break down the whole mission into several departments and work functions. And instead of focusing on the final goal of sending the man to the moon, a seemingly impossible goal, they actually break down the goal and instead of focusing on the goal, they focus on the progress and the milestones. So second tip to help, to help uh, cop coping with your perfection perfectionism is to break down your tasks, your, your seemingly perfect, perfect uh, view of your solution of your problem. You can break, break it down to smaller problems and try to list down the milestones. So, the third symptoms of perfectionism is that for uh, people they, they always they, they often procrastinate. So perfectionism they they they, are, they have the fear of unable to complete the task perfectly, and this will cause them to put it off as long as possible. So because they they fear that they might not be able to meet the goal, and something will bad something bad will happen and they will feel bad about themselves. So what can you do about it? So as a student, I believe everyone knows the power of deadline. Yeah, the rush that when you are completing the assignment the day before. So while you don't have to experience that, but instead you can create an artificial deadline with stakes on it. So for example, you can bet your money with your friend and telling that if I did not finish this work, uh, I, will, I will pay you some money. Uh, you, you will give the money beforehand and you can only take it back once you finish the work at, that, at the deadline that you set. So that deadline will usually be set the day, uh, maybe three days before the actual deadline. So why? Why, 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 why can this help or help with the perfect, the, the perfect perfectionist. Because if there's no deadline or nothing at stake, the perfection the perfectionist will take forever to finish. 
And with this uh, artificial deadline, there's at least a safety cushion where you can actually get panic for the actual deadline. You, you, you won't be uh, get panic for the actual deadline and start beating yourself up when why, why, uh, thinking why you did not start the project earlier. So when the money is at stake, it will force you to get started and think realistically how to, how to get the result up on that deadline instead of keep putting it off and thinking about those nitty gritty. So we have to remember putting it off doesn't make it go away and getting it, getting it done does. So you can try to set an artificial deadline so that you can complete it beforehand. Uh, I think your time is up already. Oh, so can we harness the benefits of perfectionism when minimizing the negative effect? I believe it's a spectrum. It's a spectrum between perfect, for being perfect and being an ambitious. So we have to strike for the balance between them. So what you can do about it is you can, strike, you can still strike for the perfect, but remember to take rest break down the goal, focus on progress instead of the end goal so that you will not beat yourself up and you feel bad about yourself. Thank you. Your applause giving to uh, professionalism, electrical engineer slash the therapist. <laughs> Amazed by the cosplay that uh, Toastmaster Hong Kong did, huh? Very wonderful speech. Just curious, being a professionalism, electrical engineer, uh, when you see why you like this, I am not quite sure what's your feelings on that. Curious to see like uh, why you're crumbling. What would you do to 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 release your stress? For example, oh, I I cannot stand that. I will, I will try to make it wireless. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you again to our Toastmaster Hong Jin. Our last speakers for today presenting us project understanding your leadership style level two. Next speaker, Kao Yang, postgraduate post student. Let's invite evaluator Gladys Chu to read the purpose statement. Thank you. The purpose of this project is for the member to identify his or her primary styles, leadership styles. And uh, the purpose of his speech is for the member to share some aspects of his primary styles and discuss leadership styles in general. Back to you. All right. Welcome, Yasmin, to read the notes for Gladys. Gladys, during the completion of this project, the member responded to a questionnaire to help identify his primary leadership style. About this speech, the member will deliver a well-organized speech about some aspects of leadership styles. The member may choose to speak about his own leadership style or leadership styles in general and their impact. The speech may be humorous, informational or any style the member chooses and the speech should not be a report on the content of understanding your leadership style project. Back to you, TME. Right. Welcome Speaker Kao Yang presenting Shh, Don't Tell Her. Shh, don't Tell Her Kao Yang. Nobody likes a bad problem. Ladies and gentlemen, and all you listeners out here, I, I just have something that I really wanted to pour my heart out, right? And uh, that comes with the topic of toxic work environment. And I wanted to share to you a situation, right? So uh, I want you to meet three person right here. So the first person is Sleepy head, okay. So this is sleepy head. So she's the first person. Then there is happy dino. Always happy, really happy guy. And then we have the incredible hawk. Imagine that they are all in the same team. So of course, when you have this dynamic trio, sparks will fly. And there were many, many different 
problems that arise from their dynamism. First, they like to argue among each other. Sometimes, the Hulk would demand certain things. I want to finish work at this time. That's why I need to go back exactly on the dot. No question asked. Sleepyhead isn't sure what's happening around her. She's being pushed around. And then Happy Dino always tries to keep things positive. However, he was not aware of the true situation that is happening in his team. So, three managers have to come in. The first manager, the original manager managing this team, was a person who is really, really detailed. Manager number one said, I'm gonna set the rule to make sure all three of them follow my rule. And if they do not follow, there will be consequences. At first, the incredible hawk was not stressed but angry with the arrangement. While the other two were stressed out. Then the first manager gave up. Manager said, I am done. This is impossible. They do not follow rules. Enter the second manager. The second manager says, Okay, I'm gonna try something different here. I will be the authority figure. You have to follow what I say. Then comes Happy Dino. And he said, Ever since you came in, you changed everything up. I tried to keep the team positive, but they just won't listen. And Happy Dino quit. So, what is it to be done? The manager said, if authority doesn't work, I'm not going to help anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, leadership style plays a critical role in specifying what type of subordinates would behave as. So, scandals and inappropriate behaviors mark many, many different businesses. And this is not unique to businesses outside, but also in non-government, non-for-profit organizations. These are the imperfect followers. Now, nobody likes bad problems, but it is always an opportunity to the managers as well as the leaders and to the followers themselves to make a bad situation less stinky. So, I'm talking about abusive supervisors that relates directly in promoting a toxic environment. So what's a toxic environment? A toxic environment exists when your team stops communicating. They do not hear from each other and they definitely do not hear from you, the leader. That's where the term knowledge hiding occurs. That's what I thought could be the problem. You see, the third manager that came in was me. I inherited a really, really tough team. And they've been really secretive of each other. Ever since Happy Dino left, Angry Hawk has been keeping to himself. Sleepy head is just minding home business and she wouldn't want to provoke anyone. Then in came a new person. It's Innocent Larry. So Innocent Larry came in and he wasn't sure of what to do. And that's when he told me, Shh, don't tell her. But I know 
that the hawk is trying to take advantage of the extra hours and he's bullying me and her and everyone as a manager i don't think it is the right way to keep things a secret so when it comes to human motivation there are four core uh, behaviors one person is the type who benefit the group i call him the collective collector the second upholds a principle if i need to have something done at this time it is my principle to finish it then there's another who benefit the self egoism and finally one who benefit others the altruist action that helps other with no self-benefit is altruism. Action that harms another with no obvious benefits is sadism. So I am not all for this sadist environment. So I went in and I brought in my brand of leadership. And that leadership is something that I cultivated here in Toastmasters itself. You see, here in Toastmasters, I learned to admit that I'm not perfect. To admit that I make mistakes and to admit that I fail. Using that hum humility, I help others to enable themselves and to open up conversation and allow dialogue thanks to my background in Toastmasters. In the end, I managed to get the hawk to cool down, even though he still wants what he wants. But I try to let Sleepyhead to sleep when she needs to, while also helping the hawk make sure that he can go back on time. You see, agreeability is really important in a team. It doesn't matter if you have the most efficient team or the most rule-following team member, but if they do not communicate, they do not like each other, they do not enjoy the environment it will destroy the organization. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have the opportunity and you want to try this new method, I say Toastmasters is a great environment to develop altruistic leadership. And that is what my speech is all about today. Make sure that you try this altruistic leadership now because I know for sure it helped the team develop better. And I am happy to say now that the team is a lot better and Larry could enjoy the company better than said Dino. Thank you. Lovely applause to uh, Toastmaster Carl presenting to us leadership styles. Now, me personally, as a leader in this club, I have to learn a lot from Carl and from all of you. To be an altruism in leadership, I'm not that level. I say have some sort of selfishness when it comes to lead, leading a team. For me, empathize and being able to accept where the results, when results don't meet your expectations, is crucial when it comes to leadership. To empathize your team, to empathize your uh, officers. Right, that concludes our prepared speech sessions. We have witnessed three speakers, one ice breaking, one level one writing speech with purpose, and the other one level two, what is that? Present a leadership style, leadership style level two project. And these are all in Toastmasters education program. And that's the gist of these prepared speech sessions. Members are given a chance to uh, explore education program crafted beautifully by the Toastmaster Internationals and apply them to real life, apply them to their own club. So now, now the prepared speech session is concluded. Now passing the floor to Zoom Master for the voting of mass speaker. Uh, can thank please. Do master.
sorry sorry my laptop lag just now i'll launch the poll now i uh, please vote for your best speaker is it Xinping? is it hong jian or is it Pao? oops i don't get to vote because i'm the co-host of this meeting Okay, 10 of 15, 61%. I will give another 10 seconds for that. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, come on, 4 more, 3, 2, 2 and a half, 1.5, come on, yes, we need 4 more members to vote. 1 and has ended. Thank you so much for watching. Shall now pass the floor to GE General Evaluator, Area W1 Director, those Master Yasmin, for the evaluation sessions. Over to you. Thank you, DME Ming Kang. This is the third segment of a Toastmaster meeting. It's called the evaluation segment. So without further ado, I would like to invite the table topic evaluator, Presentation Mastery 3, Jian Wen, to give the evaluation to all table topic speakers today. Over to you, Jian Wen. Thank Hello, hello. Oh, okay. Hello. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you, GE, GE uh, Yasmin. Okay, so now I will start, like to start my table topics evaluation. The first speaker is Toastmaster Ming Kang with his topic E equals to MC squared. So Ming Kang, I, I really like the way you start your speech where you introduce yourself while relating, while relating yourself to the topic, right? Because because why should I listen to you talk about E equals MC squared? And then you say like, oh, I'm a physics student from UM. Uh, then throughout your speech, your vocal variety, you, I mean, throughout, at the starting of the speech, you sound like very confident and very enthusiastic to share about your speech. So it makes me very attracted to keep on listening and keep on listening. So what I would suggest you, okay, and, but, but what I would suggest you to work on is because the timer forgot to change the screen, right? And you speak so enthusiastically and then suddenly you say, oh, is it past the time already? Then it sounds like you don't want to talk to me already. I was listening, oh, so interesting, so interesting. This person say, hey, 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 I think my time is up. Then, oh, it, it, it affects the mood of the speech. And then, suggest, and then I have uh, other suggestions, which is E equals MC square. You explain even MC square equals very, very big number. You just give very big number. I, I don't know what does E equals MC square means. What does E means? What does MC means? I, I don't know. So, and next, halfway throughout the speech, you suddenly talk about atomic bombs. Atomic bombs. Then after that, you, so, so and then you're very disconnected. So I would suggest you is have a clear idea of what you want to speak at the front when you start your speech. So after that, throughout your speech, then, you have a clear idea, then you slowly build up your story. You build up, you tell your stories until the ending there. So you just trust the process instead of just tell one thing then suddenly tell another thing, which makes it very disconnected. Okay, next, Daryl. Uh, descriptive eating, descriptive eating a burger, okay? So Daryl's speech, your speech is to give a descriptive, descriptive about eating a burger. Throughout your speech, you talk about, you, you, you mentioned things like you prefer Burger King over, I think it was McD. I say some burger makes the patty. So I say you did a very great job sharing your preferences because in Toastmaster meetings, we speak not just to improve ourselves, but to share, share what we know, share about ourselves with other members. So this is what I really like your speech. But then you sound, you sound, you don't sound like a burger person. You don't sound like a burger person. You sound a bit, uh, okay, la, the burger. The burger, I prefer Burger King, uh, uh, patty. I think some make patty. You sound a bit dull. So, so in, in Toastmasters, you, the speech, you don't have to really agree with the speech. So maybe, 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 maybe you're not a burger person. I don't know. Uh, maybe you're a bubble tea person. Then you can talk, 
talk bad about burgers. You say like, oh, burger, the picture usually counts so nice. But then when, when you take, when you order the thing, the burger is so small, so small, looks so dull. But bubble tea, you have a thick layer of cheese and then you have the sugar, the crunchy sugar on top, the burnt sugar. Wow, you taste it, it's sweet, it's bitter, it's delicious. Uh, then you, maybe you speak about your favorite food and then maybe you can speak about your favorite food like, and then you can bring back the energy. Then you bring up, you, you, people also want to listen to you more. Okay, next is uh, uh, Danish. Words are the sharpest weapon. So Danish, I really like your speech because you, you, you give a very confident or a person who knows a lot, knows what he is speaking. You start a speech with a quote, you know, the pen is mightier than a sword. And then you talk about different, different weapons name, all the guns name, I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I know you've mentioned a lot of guns name. And then it shows like you're very knowledgeable. Then people are listening to you. And then you also use very descriptive. You say the thing cut, cut like hot butter to melted butter. <laughs> so my suggestion to you is, you can speak slower because for me, I find that you speak quite fast and your pauses also are quite short. So the impact, you use a lot of description, uh, you use a lot of, you use some quotes, but the impact I think is lost because I was trying to catch up with your speech. So that, that is my suggestion to you, Danish. Uh, next is a double, uh, is a double speaker, right? Gladys and uh, Kim, Kim Teng. Negotiate. Negotiate proper price with an uh, economic rice seller. Okay, so Kim Teng, I, I like, I like, I like, I like you lah. Okay, I like you because you're a very polite buyer. Okay, you, you use a, uh, okay, you are supposed to negotiate, but then people give you the price ten ringgit, then you're like, I don't want like ten ringgit too expensive. Maybe I go for seven ringgit. So you're such a polite buyer, and then, and then because you're such a polite buyer, I feel that. Gladys also become a very polite, very pleasant seller. Gladys is so happy to have this customer. So if I'm Gladys, if I'm the seller, I also be very happy to have this customer. But then uh, if I'm your friend, right, who is your friend, uh, Ming Kang and who, then I say, hey, this King thing, can, I cannot buy stuff, ask King thing to help me buy stuff already. My meals every day, five ringgit, suddenly King thing go there, seven ringgit. <laughs> so yeah, your, your prayer is to negotiate price, but you, you did not already negotiate price. Then also Gladys have no choice to show off her skill as a seller. And then the last one, the last stable topics is by Fernandez and Yasmin. Uh, touring in, tourists in China asking for direction. Okay, so Fernandez, I like, I like the way you start off your speech. You are very charming. You set a very good atmosphere. You meet a local Chinese and you say, hello, Lang Loi, can you help me? Then the locals are very happy. They are also very enthusiastic to help you out. Then, then yeah, so it did, uh, you start the speech, then everybody is also very interested in the speech. And throughout the local variety, you're very friendly while asking questions, you know, ask about the Great Wall of China, how do you travel there? And then because of you being very charming, very polite, very, very polite person, and then Yasmin, the local, also become very helpful. And then not only she help you, she give you direction, she also wanted to help you pay for the electric bike. And become we all of us feel wow China citizens very good. I just want to go to China. So in the end, the speech ended by Fernanda straight away going to China. Wow. So, I, so so yeah, I, I like I like I like how Fernanda and Yasmin interacted and I make the speech very enjoyable. So that is all for me. Back to you, uh, back to you, general evaluator. Thank you, Jenwen, for giving us tips on how to improve our engagement and also expand our table topic speech. And now we shall proceed to the speech evaluation. Before that, I would like to invite the evaluator for Yuming's evaluation, effective coaching for Jeff Ng to read the purpose statement to you, Ming. Right. Thank you so much, Madam Je Miss Janet Evaluator, Nick Yasmin, Area W1 Director. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Toastmasters, and so to our evaluator, these are the purpose statements for you today. The purpose for your project today is to practice applying feedback and serve as a speech evaluator during a club meeting, which is right after this. And the purpose for you today is also to deliver a constructive feedback on another member's presentation, which is in this case, Singping's speech. With that, all the best, and over to you, General Evaluator. Thank you, Jeff. And the notes to you 
it is recommended that the member evaluating this portion of the project be, be a proven exemplary evaluator, present a speech on a topic, receive feedback from an evaluator, and incorporate that feedback into the second speech. So about this speech is actually the last portion of this assignment is for the member to serve as an evaluator at the club meeting. The member will deliver an engaging and constructive evaluation of another member's speech. And they will also demonstrate proper meeting etiquette by being fully engaged during the speeches. The members may choose to take notes during the speech as they are evaluating. Now, I would like to invite the speech evaluator to Simping speech. You may over to you. Uh, thank you, General Evaluator, for giving me the opportunity to make a first evaluation speech for today uh, with um, Simping. Um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you uh, for making the effort to make an ice-breaking speech on yourself, uh, sharing about your personalities, which is being introverted, workaholic, and the, my favorite part, the, the interesting quotes about yourself, which is the history of your name, uh, i.e. why your name, your English name is uh, distinctly different from your name in Mandarin Chinese. Moreover, you also share with us about your eagerness to change from, from being an introverted person to a person who, 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 who aspire to become a public speaker, which is one of the reasons why you're joining Toastmasters uh, for seven months since December last year. Uh, so for, uh, in lieu of this situation, uh, in lieu of this, I am happy to inform you that uh, you have completed the eye speaking speech which is, uh, which is, uh, I'm so, sorry. Uh, you have completed your the first project of your first project of your Toastmaster journey, which is ice breaking speech. So as a starter, um, I really like your body gesture, especially you use this and you especially use this when you are trying to express about your feelings, uh, being uh, in being introverted and also uh, your experience during the secondary school years and also um, working in the working in Aeon as a part-timer. And I personally felt engaged uh, by listening and listening to your experience. And I'd like you to continue doing so in, in the subsequent speeches throughout your Toastmasters. Uh, secondly, um, I'd like to point out that you have made a lot of effort to, to prepare a speech. It's quite evident through the speech structure, which, it, which first thing first, you have list out three things about yourself. You make lists. Second thing is that you make quotations, which includes quotes from Obama. And lastly, you also open up the floor and ask anyone around here whether we should believe in fortune telling. And as for any improvements on this speech, I would say the first thing first is eye contact. At the start of the speech, I have noticed uh, you have blinked a lot at the start of the speech, and I felt a bit distracted at the beginning. Uh, so what I could suggest to you is that you've made, in your future speeches, uh, you try to think, imagine yourself as you're talking to someone close to you, or you're familiar with, like your friend or or your family members. So that will help you to be more confident in your future speeches. As for the pacing of the speech, I realized you spoke a bit too fast. I felt a bit lost and we couldn't catch up with your speech because I want to really want to hear what's your experience. So what I could suggest in your future speeches is that you may slow down a little bit as, and elaborate more on your experience so that we can be in your in your feet. Uh, that's all from me. Thank you so much. Uh, back to you, GE. Thank you, Yuming, for your evaluation. Next, I would like to invite Innovative Planning Tree, Kui Min, to give us the evaluation on 
Hun Jen's speech. Over to you. Thank you, January Valuator Yasmin, for the kind introduction. And also to Hong Jen as well for the opportunity for all of us in this meeting this evening to witness your amazing presentation. Now, I don't use the word amazing lightly and let me share with you some reasons why I think that your speech is amazing. Now, the first thing to any speech is, of course, the content. It is your meat, the bulk of your entire speech, which is what you are telling us. Now, I like how you have organized your speech, or rather how you have structured your speech, that portrays that it flows in a very coherent manner. manner. So you started off with asking us for an opinion. How would you feel if someone labels you a perfectionist? Do you feel good? Do you feel happy? Or do you feel threatened or disappointed because you are being overvalued or in some kind of ways? And then you move on to telling us a comparison between ambitions and also perfectionism. Then you move on to telling us how to cope if one of us here suffers from perfectionism maybe me and lastly you move on to your closing which is a message to all of us so that we strive a balance between our ambitions and also perfectionism and also the a brief summary of how to cope which is basically a summary of your entire speech that's a very good way it's very easy to follow helps us to understand your speech better the next thing that I love about your speech is undoubtedly your stage act. I think everyone loved that. The moment you step away where you invited your quote unquote friend <laughs> who is the therapist. I believe that is such a smart move where you not only incorporated humorous elements to your speech which makes it very very enjoyable. You also bring in a person of a more credible position to talk about a topic which is somewhat related to perfectionism which is psychology you bring in a therapist and you also through, you, through your content you also quoted what is burnout according to the american psychology association that's killing two birds in one stone for me now i will summon my perfectionist self in recommending what I believe this speech could be better if so and so is incorporated. Now, I believe there is too many things, too little time. This is a very unfortunate case that this speech is only five to seven minutes. Now, the recommendation is roughly 100 words per minute. So for five to seven minutes, 700 words, 700 words should be the ballpark that you should strive for. In this case, I would recommend, very unfortunately, I would recommend you to scrape away the ambitions and perfectionism part where you compare these two because it's not really your purpose of this speech. And I see my time is up, so I'll share the rest of my evaluations with you on a later note. Thank you, and back to you, January evaluator. Thank you, Grimin, for your evaluation. And next, I would like to invite Motivational Strategy 5, Gladys, to give the evaluation on Kyle's speech. Over to you, Gladys. Thank you very much, GE. Yeah, Kyle. Today, I'll be uh, looking for two things, your primary style, leadership styles, and the impact you have on people around you. So when you started your speech, I really like you use your three props. You're talking, you're giving an example of how you like, you wanted the members to understand a bigger picture by using these three props. So the scenario you created with a bad leader and the impact it has on the situation. 
Now, the picture given was an anarchy company. Describe how the three managers come steps in, right? A scenario whereby the anarchy can be characterized as a chaotic situation in which the people are not controlled by rules or law. So ultimately, it's how you want to work more effectively with people around you. And your style is the altruistic style. In fact, there's no good or bad style at all. It refers to the degree of authority that the leaders adopt to influence the behavior of the subordinate. And in simple terms, how you want things done through others. After hearing your speech, here are my suggestions. In fact, we shouldn't take on the whole world to ourselves. There is no good or bad leaders. True enough, you learn a lot through leadership skills in Toastmasters. I would like to hear more on how this altruistic person you are that can adjust your styles to lead people to work better with you. Expand on your altruistic style because most of us once has more than one style. I'm sure you don't even have one by itself. So in conclusion, I just like to say that perhaps you, you can end it, especially when your title is Don't Tell Her. What is the one Don't Tell Her got to do with the, all this situation that you mentioned just now? You tied up, perhaps you can tie it up. Now there's one quote from John Maxwell. He says that when you live your life with intentionality, there's no, no limit to what you can do. So I really like the effort that you put into this speech and we learned something about your style. So back to you. Thank you Gladys for your evaluation. I would like to invite our last evaluator, Jeff, to evaluate on Yuming's evaluation. Over to you, Jeff. This general evaluator, fellow Toastmasters, and especially to you, to our evaluator here today, Toastmaster Yuming. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to congratulate you for your maiden evaluation in terms of your feedback, as well as to achieve your purpose statement for today, which is to give an evaluation in a very concisive and also in a very practical manner. So congratulations for achieving your objective for today. Everyone here, please give him a round of applause or rather virtual applause to those master you will here for today. All right. So today, my feedback will be basically a five letter alphabet from C to G, C, D, E, F, G, right? And hopefully for Toastmasters filming and also to the rest of the Toastmasters, we can actually learn and also to apply what the skills that the each evaluator can have and also perhaps like some of the suggestions that we can build upon. So let me start off with the strengths that <clears throat> Toastmaster filming has for today's evaluation. So I believe in his maiden evaluation, he has proved to have a very good speech content uh, in terms of his evaluation and also what I realized is that he actually delivers his evaluation on time right in terms of this evaluation content he's very attentive he listens to the speaker's speech very well he actually captured the gist of the speaker's uh, three main points as well as uh, her introvertedness her daily interaction the difference between the names and everything her experience working at AOM Mid Valley and such so I really find he has focused very much on his evaluation content based on what the speakers has already speak earlier on. And another thing that I really felt that uh, he's a very uh, detail-oriented person, which also manages to deliver on time within the time frame of uh, two to three minutes. And in fact, before the time's up at before three minutes and 30 seconds. So the content is very good and the delivery also is very good. Now, I only have a little bit minor point of improvement, which is the E. So the E part definitely involves the eye contact. Uh, I do feel and I do realize a little bit whereby your eye focus actually tends towards on your left when you speak. And therefore, uh, what I can suggest to you is that because I know in terms of the evaluation, you can actually uh, 
uh, tend to forget few of the points. So you can actually post, uh, post some of the play cards or even the sticky notes in the middle nearby your camera so that your eye can be more engaged and also focus to the audience. Now, for the challenging part, the F and the G, focus your evaluations. Because I feel that in terms of your feedback, there are a lot of things that you might want to say to the speaker. So in evaluation, what we usually do is to focus on the three aspects that the speaker may need, as well as the strength that the speaker has, and the rest of the Gs of the evaluation, you can actually tell or rather inform the speaker after the meeting. And finally, the G, the Gs, remember to always include the summary at the end, because conclusion for any evaluation is always like a speech. It's also quite important. So overall, good content, good delivery, focus on the engagement in terms of the eye contact, and finally, be more focused in terms of evaluation and also the Gs at the end of the summary. Thank you so much. Back to you. Thank you, Jeff, for your evaluation. Let's give a big round of applause to our table topics evaluator and also the speech evaluators. Zoom master, is the poll ready? Yes, the poll is ready. I'll launch it now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's vote for our best evaluator. Jeff's name is here. Oops. Uh, okay. My mistake. <laughs> Maybe those who wants to vote for Jeff can personally message the Zoom master. Yes. Okay. Sure. Right. Now is the part where we receive our technical report evaluation. And first, I would like to invite our grammarian, Alvin, to give his grammarian report. Over to you. All right, thank you, uh, General Evaluator Yasmin. All right, so let me, uh, am I audible? Yes. All right, okay. Okay, so for my, to remind you guys again, for today's meeting, the word is opportunity. And to start off my grammar report, Ming Kang started off the, uh, the sequence by telling us that opportunity is everywhere and using it once. And then during the induction, Joshua and other UMTMC members also used the word opportunity during the meeting and during and then during the uh, table topics uh, section Danish used the word once and then for the next part would be the evaluation session used the word opportunity used by Yu Meng and Kui Min. Now moving on to the good selection of words basically like uh, the any outstanding words quotes sayings or thoughts used by the Toastmasters during this meeting. To start off, Ming Kang mentioned that why change one life when you can change thousands? When he uh, when he did his his opening speech for the for this meeting as well as uh, the as a new elected president for this club. And then Danish also used uh, also mentioned how if you don't know how to use words properly, all hell breaks loose. Basically, uh, refers to the idea that words can be detrimental. So we have to be very careful with how we say things, how we uh, engage in conversations. And then moving on, Singping uh, quoted Bar Bar Barack Obama by saying that change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones that we that we have been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. So I really like how she quoted Barack Obama. And then Hong Jian mentioned that no obvious parameter as a benchmark in perfectionism during his speech. Uh, fifth is Kyle, Kyle Young. He talked, he actually uh, used a very, quite a very, I wouldn't say new, but a very rare word that not we don't use it in a day-to-day -day conversation, which is altruism. 
it means selflessness. So basically means that you are not, uh, you you re you don't really have. I'm sorry for that. Uh, moving on, Gladys Chu. Uh, forgive me for uh, uh, missing this, but uh, she used John C. Maxwell quote. So perhaps later you can uh, update me with this. All right. So now there are no any mispronounced words, so we can move on from that. Now the third part is the grammar, like any correction that needs to be uh, used. So I'll briefly go through it so any like very, most of them are very small errors for daryl he used a lot he repeat, repeatedly used i think a lot so which i can think uh i can think of that perhaps maybe you can improve on which use in my opinion or if you ask me and then just like uh tian will talk about how he was talking about he was not really a burger person so he perhaps if you want to make more to be more come up as more confident you can use i believe and then for Ken Tang, he he's, he mentioned about how I'm driving here, basically indicating that his use of mode of transportation. Perhaps you can use I came here by car or I took my car. And Yasmin, you used a lot of and then during your uh, table topics. So perhaps maybe you can use other connectors like firstly following. And for this one, I believe uh, is Hong Jian. You talk about no obvious parameter as a benchmark in perfectionism. You can say that perfectionism is a spec spectrum, basically refers to the idea that perfectionism resists easy classification or complex. Now, moving on, uh, this is basically extra knowledge by Jen, uh, how Jen mentioned about burnt sugar. Uh, burnt sugar in other more like scientific or proper terms, we can use blackjack in, blackjack is used in the baking industry or caramelized sugar. So that is all for the grammarian's report for today's meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Alvin, for the very detailed report. Next, I would like to invite our R counter, Iktifa, to give his R counter report. Over to you. Thank you, Yasmin, for the kind introduction. So tonight, there's a few participants that have committed the, the crime of saying R and repeats. The first one uh, you know, on the list is Hon Jen. You said so why the a lot of times during your speech. So maybe in the future, you can just pause and think about the next sentence that you're talking about. <clears throat> next is Ken Teng. You had three uh, force fillers. Elvin, you had two. Itifa had five. Sorry, had six. Joshua has one. Daryl has four. Carl has three. Kumin has three. Yasmin, you repeated right twice and our BPE yeah, you have three for post fillers. Back to you, Yasmin. Thank you, Iktifa. Lastly, I would like to invite our timekeeper, Joshua, to give his timers report. Over to you. Thank you, January evaluator. I will share my screen now. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. All right. Okay. So for today's meeting, our meeting started at 8 p.m. And SA calls meeting to order, 1 minute 33 seconds. President's opening address, 3 minutes 10 seconds. The new expo induction took 11 minutes 16 seconds. For new member induction, slightly over 8 minutes. Yeah, slightly over 8 minutes. For Toastmaster of the evening, takes control is 7 minutes, 15 seconds. Moving on to the table topic segment, our first speaker, Ming Kang, 4 minutes, 19 seconds. Uh, forgive me for not taking note of the time, uh, but hopefully we can make it into a 5-minute speech since it's such a good speech and everyone enjoy it. For Daryl, 1 minute 49 seconds. Danish, 2 minutes 18 seconds. Gladys and Kinteng, 5 minutes 15 seconds. Lastly, Fernandez and Yasmin, 4 minutes 42 seconds. Moving on to the project speech segment. Unfortunately, most is over time, but it's okay. You can always do better in the next speech. Singping, 7 minutes 8 seconds. Hong Jian, 10 minutes 11 seconds. Tao, 9 minutes 16 seconds. 
Next is the table topics evaluation. Tian Wen, 6 minutes 50 seconds, over 1 minute 20 seconds. Then moving on to our speech evaluator, number one, Yu Meng, 3 minutes 37 seconds. Kui Min, 3 minutes 49 seconds. Gladys, 2 minutes 53 seconds. And Jeff, 3 minutes 17 seconds. And for the role players, Elvin, 4 minutes 36 seconds. Iktifa, 45 seconds. Last but not least, me, 1 minute 42 seconds. And that is all. Back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you, Joshua, for the timer's report. Let's give a round of applause to our technical role players for tonight. Woo. It's already close to 10.30, so I will keep my report. I will give a short and sweet report. Hopefully it's sweet. First of all, I think I really enjoyed tonight's meeting. I find that all this, we learned a lot. I learned a lot from all the speakers today and also from the evaluators. What I really like from the evaluators, the both table topic evaluator and also the speech evaluators is that when they give suggestions for improvement, they also give us how to improve. For example, like how to improve our eye contact, maybe uh, practice with someone else. So, I think that by providing examples, the speakers and also the participants of, meet, of the meeting can actually learn a lot and we will improve for our future speeches. And yeah, I really like tonight's vibe, the meeting's vibe. And if I have a suggestion on how to improve the meeting, perhaps for Ming Kang, our president, Maybe when you are a president, you can mention that, okay, I'm putting on my president hat. And then when you move to being a TME, then you just make a mention that I'm actually putting on my TME hat so that the members and the guests know which part of the agenda that we are at. Okay. And then for the table topics, Master Itifar, <laughs> I find that this session is a bit long. So in, in order for you to maybe um, keep your session in the duration, perhaps you can remove, you can, uh, how do I say it? Like actually plan ahead how many topics you want us to role play because I think during the role playing, it takes a longer time. And yeah, I, I, I actually enjoyed tonight's table topic. There's a lot of role playing. Even during the speech, there are also some role plays. So it was a very interesting and fun meeting to me. And yeah, that's all from me. Uh, back to you, Toastmaster of the evening, Ningka. Thank you, General Evaluator Toastmaster Yasmin. Now, applause to all the evaluators and role players. Going on to the exciting sessions, award ceremony, I'd like to uh, have Zoom Master to present the slides to reveal who is going to win the best table topics, the best prepared speeches, and the best prepared speech. Okay, I see. Leak, uh, uh, which they will call leak. <laughs> it's okay. Let's uh, pretend not seeing it and we miss physical type of uh, drum roll, but we can do the same on online. So, the winner, <laughs> the winner of the best table topic goes to. Congratulate. To ah, come on, Fernandez and Yasmin, a pair of tourists slash uh, local, for being the best ever topic speakers, speakers in this meeting. Congratulations! Uh, do you want to take a photo, Zoom Master? Can you help me to do it? I'm sharing screen. 
Raish, uh, let me spotlight the winners. And another winners with that. The Anders is still there. I think he has already left, so I'll just take a photo of our G. So 3, 2, 1. Alright, thank you so much. Moving on to the next prize. Who is gonna win the best prepared speech? The best prepared speech goes to... Congratulates to Toastmaster. Couldn't see it. Queen. Oh, best evaluator. So sorry. <laughs> the uh, order has been shuffled. Congratulations, best speech evaluator, Queen. Trying to take a photo. I would now spotlight you. I don't see you. Okay, I saw you. Hello. I. So ready, 3, 2, 1 Okay So our last prize will go to the best tape, the best prepared speech Best prepared speaker goes to Drum roll Congratulations Uh, who is that? Same thing. Same thing. You feel free to switch on your camera to have a photo session. Are you having a vacation? All right. I don't see Same thing in this uh, in this meeting. So congratulations to Same thing being the best prepared speech speaker, giving us a speech. Congratulations. All right. Thank you, Zoom Master, for this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> One more last appreciation to General Evaluator. Let's welcome Yasmin to receive this award. Thanks for coming as the General Evaluator. <laughs> this is a very fast editing. <laughs> All right. I would like to take a photo again for uh, Yasmin. Double awards today. G and the band stable topic speaker. Right. Where's the slide? Okay, I'll just take one without the slide. Three, two, one. Okay, thank for every winners. Um, uh, congratulate every winners. And for those who didn't win, your chance will be might be at future meeting. So do speeches again, join us again, and attempt table topics again. Oh, Yuzuru. Helps uh, Yasmin to win a prize, uh, <laughs> giving luck to her. All right, since it's now 10.35, I'll keep this closing ceremony short. I just want to say, uh, to announce that the club officer training for Division W, which UN Toastmaster is uh, at, fortunate enough to have it in our own campus in University of Malaya. So it's a good opportunity to all the members to help us on 30th of July to do some preparations to prepare for the COT. So if anyone is interested, it's free that day. I think it's the morning. I will confirm again. And if you uh, would like to help us in these preparations, feel free to let me know so I can add you in the group. All right. So another announcement will be for guests who are interested to join us as Toastmasters members, I would like to introduce the Vice President membership, Joshua. Try to introduce yourself as a VPN. So that guests will recognize you. All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Joshua. I am the current Vice President of membership. And if any of you are interested to join University Malay Toastmasters Club, or if you have a friend or anyone you know that is interested to join University Malay Toastmasters Club, you may share their contact with me. And But if you don't have my contact, you can always go to our social media webpage to find my contacts, or you can also contact Ming Kang or 
Yes, contact Ming Kang, the president for my contact. And I will help to handle, handle them with the registration procedure. That is all from me. Thank you. All right. Since the time um, is up. Do you guys need my phone number here? <laughs> in case. Yeah, we just share it in the chat. All right. Oops, people have to show us phone number one. Since the time limit, uh, time is up over time, I will just have one guest. I will just like to invite one guest to give us the meeting feedback. What do you think of today's meeting? May I invite Zainal Abidin Ibrahim, uh, if you're there, to give us the feedback? Yes. Um... I try to introduce yourself and I'll talk about what do you think of today's meeting? Yes, um, I am from uh, Faculty of Computer Science. Uh, I'm a PhD. Uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, I'm quite new to this Toastmasters and I'm happy I will, I will try to join. Okay, thanks for the feedback. I would like to see you again in the future. Perhaps take up the favorite topic speaker. Challenge yourself. And I would like to announce that quite fortunate I have the gavel in my hand. <laughs> so I would like to announce that this meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much for participating. Looking into my camera. All right, thank you so much. Thanks and good night, everyone. Bye bye. Thank bye. you. Good night. Thanks for coming. Good night. Thank you. Have a great Tuesday. Everyone is anyone is up for Bika Daily. <laughs> that's good. That's good to get early. I would love to, but I have COVID. <laughs> oh, tomorrow I have to wake up early. Bye. Bye. Uh, let's go, let's go. You went good job being the uh, first time evaluator. Hi. Uh, I, uh, I actually I should make announcement before this meeting ended. Is that the upcoming meetings for other society, other clubs? Is that necessary? Yeah, my lah. You just post inside the WhatsApp. Hmm. Because we don't have. Uh, so let's say there were two: one from APU, one from uh, Utah Sungai Long. Utah Sungai Long, yes. Yeah, so yeah. Okay. just one question for the APU Toastmaster meeting. Do you have you approached the organizer? Uh, yes, I am a grammarian on that on that day. You, you already approached the organizer, right? Yeah, yeah, Fatima, yes. Uh, Ming oh, yeah. okay, okay, all right. I I am the grammarian for the day. Wow. Good luck, then, man. Joshua, Joshua, just want to ask, have you approached Karen? The OCBC Toastmaster Club meeting happening tomorrow. Uh, yes, I approached yeah. her. She says she will share my contact with the president. Okay, thank you. Because they, 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 they need two more role players. And then they say that if they couldn't get two more role players for their meeting, maybe they'll postpone their meeting because it they need a GE and a tabletop event. Oh. Oh, they need GE two and? Two extra. Uh, and GE and TDE. <clears throat> when is this? Tomorrow, 12 p.m. Yeah. I, I cannot do, I have meetings. Oh, 12 p.m. Uh, p.m. I cannot. It's uh, afternoon, uh, lunch time. Uh, well, lunch time, actually, it's just been dry, right? Like lunch time. time. Uh, I just have to make it, sorry. Yeah. Lunch time cannot, lah. Uh. Yeah. I think it's, uh, most of, I think, I do, I do meetings mostly after dinner. <laughs> I know this part, I observe that, lah. <laughs> Guys, if you go to our social media, you will see Ken Teng's wonderful speech. Yeah, I saw already. Yeah, you, you I, share it already. I, I, I mean, yeah. Who wants to be life. next to it's have their good. speech posted? Yours lah, Ming Kang. Yeah, Talk yeah. about what? Yeah, actually, your uh, astrophysicist Your astrophysicist also can. I, I already put it on my IG. You make a speech about being yeah, I already put it on my profile. <clears throat> Share the seniors, la, whoever. Maybe I would. Um, Tifa. <laughs> Up to you, la, don't mind. No, la, I have to. Because uh, yeah. some speeches are like uh, quite sensitive. like because. So, what we will do is we will. Hey, you'll go breakout room, is it? Breakout, breakout room. I don't know.
someone what breakout room ah? oh <coughs> i see someone like uh doing breakout rooms don't know hey, Sean, I haven't seen you for so long <laughs> oh sean yeah yeah <laughs> how are you doing busy busy <laughs> <laughs> cannot la at night you can, uh, work meeting <laughs> need to baby to sleep very difficult to join night meetings already oh tired because have to wake up in the midnight uh. I don't know. <laughs> have to put the baby to sleep that's that's where you need to be a bit quiet <laughs> so, okay hmm. what to do um, <laughs> What to do? Ah, we like people still single. No lah. No, you should say do whatever you want when you're still single. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Someone regretting already. Ah. Uh. Hey. Sorry. Someone Not regretting already. Ah. Uh. Words of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> mixed feelings. Ah. Uh. She has mixed feelings. <laughs> No, like sometimes you just feel to slap the baby, uh, slap hey, him. The... You don't bully hands, huh? Huh? You don't bully hands. I bring hands one night to your place, then you you agree with me already that you want to. I don't mind. Hey, actually, right, I have a good, I have a plan for a future meeting. I want to do a career focused meeting. I know Sean is doing science communication, right? Uh, and I, 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 I heard from I heard from Yu Ming. Uh, he says science communication in Malaysia is like super rare. Yes. It's it's, it's a it's a course that I heard coming in in UM. I don't know. I heard. I mean uh, the career uh, The career like <clears throat> not not a lot of people do it. Career as a science communicator is very rare. La. I mean, there's only like one or two is actively being a science communicator. But then most of the time, it's just like it's linked to the jobs. Like most professors, most lecturers, right? Their side job is to become a science communicator. They're supposed to write articles and everything. <clears throat> but then this career thingy, right? This career focus thing, I already talked to you, Ma. I want to do the workshop on this. Workshop? Remember, I messaged you. I see that I'm planning to do a workshop with Pauline and everyone. Ah, uh, my, forgot my idea. idea. So, Sean, are you a like a <coughs> side, like what Iktifa say? Not the active. I mean, me and Iktifa joined a few science communication workshops before in the past. Uh -huh. Then, um. Uh, we, I mean, personally, also, I'm running some um, events that invite scientists to communicate their field of expertise. Um, mm -hmm. Then maybe I'm not, I, I won't say I'm a full time science communicator, but part of my work is about communicating science to business people. So, oh. yeah, it, it's a skill so far. I think career wise, you have to be somewhere in Australia or in the UK where their career line is more uh, prominent at least they establish yes like your they have very uh, established science magazine and you be there as a writer and things like that yeah mm. Malaysia used to have pretty dish I think they're still active then it's used to write there then uh, I cannot continue la, writing <laughs> Very tired. You know, lah. Petri dish is still active, lah. It's the only scientific paper. I mean, there's only there's the scientific newsletter in Malaysia. But then, mm. if you go to UK, right? I think under BBC, there's a segment mm. for science communication, and then Europe also. There's a lot of outlets for science communication. They even have a science communication week. That's why I asked you to go for the Nobel Prize uh Lindau meeting. Mm. So that one, right? It's a full week of science communication, lah. <clears throat> you can actually I'm talk sure to the and everything. Huh? I'm sure I can go. Can what? Just apply what? There's one student from UM went there this year. <gasps> Is it me? Not you la. You didn't apply ma. My, <clears throat> yeah, my idea is like because the yeah, Ito's Mastercard is very diverse. Because so I wanna invite 
So far, I know Dr. Som and Dr. Saras, one from Utah, one from the MUTC. MUCM, no MUCM. MUCM, sorry. Yeah, MUCM. <laughs> That's right. That was my venue. We have COT there. Ah, <laughs> uh, I, I want to invite like postdoctorate or uh, professor to talk about their career. Oh, okay. Then I maybe invite someone from Maxis to talk about telecommunications. Very diverse lah. And they can do their projects. They don't have to come here just to give a talk. You're doing can... this for a DTM project, ah? No. <laughs> no la, like a normal five to many speech is fine. Oh, okay. can... Because the whole purpose is to mm-hmm. expose students to uh career. And but then for me, right? Of... For me, if you're gonna do if you're going to do that, five minutes not enough. No, five minutes is not enough. <laughs> At least minimum uh, 20 minutes. That's the yeah. minimum. 20 minutes for each speaker. Yes, yes. <clears throat> then the whole thing's gonna be long. That's why, to that's, be why what? that's why I wanted to say to you that you have to link your objective of doing this career talk to the class objective. You tak boleh suka suka just say oh I want to expose people to career talks and everything. But then do you think that the members need this? I think they uh, what's your opinion? Do you think you need or you think the members need? I don't know, Sean, what's your opinion? <laughs> Unless you, like, example, if your pathway, right, there are certain pathways, they got this level 4 called high performance leadership. This one, you can actually consider as one of your projects, HPL yeah. project. Yeah. But then don't just limit it to those masters, lah. Open it to mm. UM members, hey, to UM students. Then it's much more worth it. Yeah, 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 of course, but then... What's your opinion, Sean? I think have focus group because career can be very specific. Um, people will be speaking on accountancy and definitely people from the students from the science background won't be interested to attend. So mm-hmm. you can, I think last time, I think Jackie used to have like short sessions as part of the meeting where they invite someone from a different industry to speak at the beginning, sort of like a plenary, to draw new members to come in. So if you are targeting maybe uh, from Kuimin's faculty, uh, a lot of the accountancy people, then you can invite an accountant from uh, a, a very the big four to, to share a session. And I'm quite sure in Toastmaster, you can find a lot of such speakers over there. Then you can ask all the students taking this accountancy field to attend this session. So they at least came and they know that oh, Toastmasters not only joined by students, but also people that are very, um, how to say, they are very strong in their career. And I think this is one way like, and you can schedule it. So you can say like February, March, April is one specific career. So you can actually plan a, 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 a calendar, career calendar rather than one very super long meeting, then people may not stay for the whole session. So I am suggesting this one. So you can like sneak peek for the next few so the next few months. These are the people that we're inviting from this field. So that's my thought. Uh. Yeah, you have a good point honestly. Because uh, again, sorry, sorry, I still record this meeting. Uh, so uh, uh, yeah. I 